Hi students, welcome to the lesson on the last section of your notes for exercise 22. Um, it's simplifying complex fractions. So complex fractions are described basically as whenever you have a fraction within a larger fraction. Okay, so um, basically the strategy that I recommend, and there is more than one way to do this, so I don't think it's the only one, is I look at every single little fraction within the larger one, and I find the lowest common denominator of all those fractions. So here, all four terms are, let's call them mini fractions, within the larger one. So I'm going to find the lowest common denominator of every single one of those fractions. Okay. Well, in this case, um, the lowest common denominator of all those would be just x times y. So xy would be your lowest common denominator. So then what I do is I take this lowest common denominator and I multiply the numerator by x times y and I also multiply the denominator by x times y. And if you look at it, that would be like saying multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, which technically is multiplying by 1. You're always allowed to multiply by 1. Okay, so again, just to review, you see a fraction within a larger fraction. Okay, it's all kind of mixed in, jumbled up. Here's another one, right? Okay, so what you do, you find all the denominators of your little fractions and you multiply by that. Okay, so this xy multiplies both terms. So when you multiply xy times 1 over x, let's just write it out just to show you what it looks like. So you have xy times 1 over x, and you have xy times 1 over y. Okay, so this is your numerator now. You have xy times the first fraction and xy times the second. Okay, your denominator will look very similar. You'd have xy times x over y, and you'd have minus xy times y over x. Okay, and then all you got to do, since you've multiplied by the lowest common denominator, you can actually get rid of every single one of these fractions. You're not going to get rid of the big one. The big one will still exist, but there will be no little fractions left. So, in our case, for example, this x and x cancel out, right? And what you're left with is 1 times y, which in our case gives us y. In this case, the y's cancel out, and what you're left with is x times 1, which would be plus x. So notice that now there are no fractions on your numerator. Okay, we like that a lot better. Okay, and the same thing happens on the denominator here. The y's cancel out. Here the x's cancel out. And so what we have left is x times x, which is x squared, and y times y, so subtraction, y times y, which is y squared, right? So subtraction because it's sine negative. And then at this moment, what you can do is you can simply factor, and this would be back to exercise 20, okay? Before I go too far, uh, probably want to find the non-permissible values, which is a little bit trickier in this case, okay? So the non-permissible values from this expression are that x cannot equal to 0 and y cannot equal to 0. Well, if you look at this now, we continue to factor. So it's a difference of squares. Now you have x plus y times x minus y, right? And notice that the x plus y and x plus y, or y plus x, are the same factor. But before you can go there, you can now find other non-permissible values. So that's a little bit tricky, is that you can find non-permissible values at the beginning. X and Y cannot be zero. But after this multiplication here, you've discovered that there are more non-permissible values. So here, X plus Y cannot equal to zero. Therefore, X cannot equal to negative Y. And also, X minus Y cannot equal to zero, which means X cannot equal to Y. Okay. So if x and y are equal to each other, these, these created other non-permissible values. Okay, well, simply what I need to do now is get rid of this common factor, numerator, denominator. What I'm left with is 1 over x minus y, which is the simplified version of this, whoops, sorry, this expression. Okay, the second one might be a slightly easier because the fractions, there are no uh, variables in the denominator, not just yet at least. So notice we have a fraction here and we have a fraction here. Those are the only fractions that exist in the larger fraction. All right, 4 and 2. Well, I hope you think that the lowest common denominator in this case would be simply 4, right? So I multiply both the numerator by 4 and the denominator by 4. 
Okay, so this 4 is going to multiply this fraction. Notice that the 4 cancels out. So what you're left with is 2x minus 3. And don't forget, and often people forget, this 4 also multiplies the 1. So you have plus 4. On the denominator, this 4 multiplies the 2x squared. So you get 8x squared. And then when you multiply the 4 times the half, that gives you 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 1 is negative 2. Okay? And from this point on, we're just going to simplify and factor as much as we can. So notice that we can simplify the numerator to 2x my, plus 1. Sorry, And on the denominator, we can actually factor a common factor of 2, which would give us 4x squared minus 1. And that little factoring of 2 discovers a difference of squares. Perfect square, difference, perfect square. So we can continue to factor. And you'd have a 2 in front. You'd have 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1 on the denominator. Before we, can we cancel out anything, you need to recognize that there are non-permissible values here. So the non-permissible values would be 2x plus 1 cannot equal to 0. And if you solve for x, you would say that x cannot equal to negative a half. And you could do the exact same thing here, and you would x cannot equal to positive one half. All right, so now I've found my non-permissible values. Now we could easily cancel out this factor of 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1, which gives us a simplified version of 1 over 2 times 2x minus 1. All right, guys, so that's how you would deal with complex fractions.